Well, I would say that uh, Tim Alexander is on fire himself with the news he's got today. And, you, you know, a, a lot of people really don't understand the level of brilliance you have at looking at the geopolitical and military strategic thing on a multi-level space chess. But I can tell you, Tim, when you look at this, this is like the prophet standing at the top of a mountain, seeing the scape of things and realizing that he's just had an encounter with the Most High God. And God has told the uh, prophet to stand there and to scream at the caravan below to the top of his lungs, opening up a scroll, uh, just like uh, in sackcloth and ashes with the flask of honey in one hip and the dead uh, locusts in the other hip, to, and of course a bag of almonds, which is what the nuts of the prophets used to eat to keep themselves sustained in skin and bones and their sackcloth. We're I both can handle standing... the honey and the almonds, the uh, dead locusts, yuck. Go oh ahead. no, the dead locusts are great protein, man. Yeah, that's the yeah, otherwise oh, you're yeah, in trouble. Yeah, I'll cover yeah, them in yeah. chocolate and you okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> you just pour the honey on them and just take a few crunch and almonds and before you know it, you oh, just... yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> well, that's what they used to eat, believe it or not. So here, here's the situation. We've got a situation where there's so many hot spots popping up this is like a barbecue in have you ever seen a, a, the a, a plane fire a plane a flyer in the plains well i have out west in, in alberta canada and uh, i've seen also forest fires in british columbia and they're, they're scary when you see a fire moving at three to five hundred miles an hour and that fire is going to wall three to four thousand degrees temperature where things in front of it actually just burst into flame just getting near it that's what's happening geopolitically. I want you to go through all the different hotspots. And, of course, as I said yesterday, being a skeptic, that the move by uh, by Britain and Fr by, by France no, and Germany. Uh, Germany and France. Pre pre yeah. Germany and France. Uh, the so-called Poroshenko, Mr. Uh, not Chocolate King, but how about Prostitute King, this maniac. Yeah, Porky and, the, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that he was going to negotiate yeah. with Putin. And I, I knew that Putin was playing some very smart Russian cards. There's already been a lot of bloodshed, a lot of dead uh, people in Slavyansk and Donetsk already being shelled to death with the war criminal of the Kiev uh, junta government. Well, if you listen carefully to what Putin is saying the last few days, he, uh, uh, he is saying he is very concerned about the attacks well, he's going to walk Russian in there like a he's going to Ukrainian yeah. civilians. Well, a Putin is going to come in there like a messiah to save these people and the Poroshenko government is going to messiah, but he's going to come in with tanks, he's gonna, aircraft. Well, he's going to be a military messiah, <laughs> but he's going to kick some butt. And these people are going to think the messiah has arrived because Poroshenko and his group of thugs are going to get crunched. And if NATO and America thinks well, they can I take on they Russia, hung. I hope uh, I hope who, no. who can take I, Porky and uh, yachts and uh, and takes them and uh, takes them to public square and hangs there on. You're talking about Mr. Yatsenyuk, the former uh, wrestler, right? Well, anyway, what's going to happen? And and let's, let's go through the hot spots. Let, let, let me go through because yeah, I yeah, just yeah. updated uh, my blog, uh, Europe. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you have to, to be sitting down guys, for this. So, uh, large if you're, Europe. Yeah. But anyway, uh, breaking news. Okay, and and and, and this is a little summary I, I put at the top. The news from the Ukraine war from the Iraqi conflict in Syria and from the Israeli-Gaza West Bank front line is not only bad, it's like the gates of hell are opening. Wow. Now, Saudi Arabia has deployed uh, at least 30,000 troops on its border with Iraq. Now, Saudi Arabia has almost an infinite amount of money. They have a large number of American and German uh, and British main battle tanks. Uh, attack helicopters, uh, British and uh, American uh, fighters, uh, F-15Ss, uh, just you name it, they got it. Okay, uh, that basically is about two divisions worth of uh, armored divisions. Now, I, uh, the, the, there are several articles uh, on the Internet about that. I've linked three, one of which, uh, oh, I meant to put the, my five-star BS flag up. I forgot that. Anyway, it's from the mail in um, uh, London. And I, I go to that. It's it, In many ways, it's a terrible newspaper, but they do have some uh, uh, coverage of stories that other people don't. They actually have a few reports here and there, but it's a typical globalist, Zionist uh, propaganda sheet, and uh, they 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 say Saudi Arabia places thirty thousand troops on its border in the wake of the IRS threat. Well, now the IRS ISIS 
is funded by Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, and the United States. It's armed by all of us, and a Saudi prince is its de facto uh, commander-in-chief. So they're, the Saudis, uh, the, the saying Saudi Arabia is placing all these troops on its border because they're scared of ours is absolutely uh, insane. Um, but don't let that don't propaganda. let that uh, don't let that stop you though. Know, insane is these Saudis are are crazy because they collaborated with the Israelis putting the micro nukes in the World Trade Center towers, which is why they're basically the functionary arm, just like Al Qaeda is, of the CIA. And we and, and, we, and go another step. Who who does the CIA work for? It certainly doesn't work for the American people. No, it works no, no. for the globalists and the Zionists. Yeah, the uh, and the then international then bankers and the trans- with the Mossad. Right, you know? so the, the transnational bankers and the international boards of corporate for heads of companies that are transnational that, are, as I said, stretch the skins of nations across the superstructure of Satan's Earth, Inc. Corporation. Yeah, you know, maybe the uh, 30 families or 8 families, depending on how narrow you want to draw the line. But uh, uh, and, and most of these families are actual Satan worshippers. Certainly that the very apex the Rothschilds are. They, they're well known for setting a dinner plate at their, their fancy mansions for uh, Lucifer. And I mean, you, you, that's so beyond the pale to, I mean, you, you just kind of shake your head and say, what? They do what? And they yeah. do. Okay, well, so anyway, so Saudi Arabia is uh, has got an army on the board border of Iraq. And, of course, Iraq is fighting for its life. Uh, the Russians have been flying in uh, Zukov-25 uh, ground attack planes. The Zukov-25 has often been uh, described as the Soviet-Russian equivalent of the A-10 Warthog. It's a very good ground attack plane, very tough, take a lot of hits, uh, carries a lot of firepower. Uh, the Iranians have also flown in Iranian Air Force uh, Zukov 25s. Uh, it's not known whether Iranian pilots are flying it or whether it's Iraqi pilots. Um, so the Iranians, while they don't have an army there, do have a, a small part of their air force there. Um, and, of course, there are Russians on the ground now in, in Baghdad. Uh, we still haven't delivered the 35 f 16s that uh, the Iraqis already uh, paid for. Why? Well, we didn't want them to have an air force so they could stop the uh, IRIS uh, terrorists from uh, marching. Now, okay, let's uh, shift a little bit uh, to another part of the world. Uh, Israel, or nearby, but Israel has uh, been moving a large <laughs> number of IDF troops, and we're talking uh, about uh, maybe close to, I think, eight to ten brigades uh, armored and mechanized infantry troops uh, near the Gaza border. Uh, they are delaying the funeral for the Palestinian uh, kid that was killed in a revenge killing. I'm of the opinion that uh, the, the three uh, uh, Jewish Israeli boys, one of whom was a dual American citizen, that the poor kids were killed by the Israelis in a false flag uh, event. Uh, right. Always looked at who benefits from the crime. The Palestinians certainly are going to benefit from this. But this this is what Netanyahu wants. The important and yeah, well, the, I would say that his policy is what's called a rabid foreign policy, hell bent on nuclear war. Uh, oil price going through the ceiling and grabbing chunks of nations, literally the burning chunks well, I, of, of I, surrounding nations. I think nations. It, it, it's uh, he's it's overreached because the Iranians have a very good advanced biological warfare program. Hezbollah, the Syrians, and the uh, Iranians have uh, probably a hundred and some thousand missiles aimed at Israel. Uh, of course, Israel and Saudi Arabia are nuclear armed. Uh, well, and by more. the way, so by the way, so is, by, by the way, si, so is Iran. When I hear people say, "Oh, so Iran will have the bomb someday," come on, get a life. Do you think they'd behave like this if they didn't have the bomb? Come on, let's get real. Exactly. Back in a moment. Cars, they can shut down. Yeah, I know they can shut down the power grid. Well, that's, that's the most likely. Uh, the Russians can do it, though. They have the capacity. Oh, a lot of people can. <laughs> Welcome back, and uh, 
let's get on to the next part of the news. I think. Yeah, uh, let me finish with Israel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Israel has moved an army to the border of the largest open air prison on earth, the Gaza Strip, and, right. as well as the West Bank. Uh, but uh, it the the interconnections here between everything that's happening points to a a strategic uh, direction that Israel is heading in, which is quite frightening. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you look at at what is happening in Syria, Iran, Iraq, uh, with Iris. Uh, Israel is and uh, its puppet states, the United States and, and others, uh, and allied states like Saudi Arabia and Qatar, is now getting the Muslims to fight the Muslims. That is the the Shiites versus the Shunti, and it's doing its best to to really st- create havoc. Now. That in and of itself would be a, a really massive strategic undertaking, and and uh, viewed from a, a, um, a rather evil perspective, a, a great ploy uh, that, that the Israelis would would accomplish. But coming at the exact same time is this uh, thing with these poor three Israeli kids that were killed. Uh, there's been no proof to to indicate that Hamas has anything to do with it. And if you know the history of Hamas, well, it, it, they tell you right up that, front, we it, did it. Actually, Tim, I have it from my other context. The most likely thing is that the settlers were charmed to the teeth, had some in a conflict with these young people, and just took them out because they're armed to the teeth and they're crazy as hell. And if they even think they even look like Palestinians, even though they're Israelis, one of them from America, they just shoot them. Uh, and, the, and the settlers there are trigger-happy, and a little wacky, and if these kids acted a little bit like gang members or acted a little bit outlandish, they're just going to get shot. So that's probably what happened. Uh, well, there was a, 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 a there is a tape recording from one of our uh, on um, uh, his cell phone. But anyway, uh, so what you now? You of course now you've had this revenge killing of a Palestinian youth. And this, to me, indicates that the strategic direction that BB Netanyahu, or as I call him, BB six 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 Netanyahu, is taking, is to absolutely inflame all of the Middle East, because you see, uh, he's going yeah, but, to. But can, can he take on even people that are disparate enemies? For example, we now have Maliki of Iraq, who used to be an enemy of Iran. Now ask for 100 MiG-26 planes, which flew to Iran at the end of the Iran-Iraq war, right. uh, sorry, the war with America, because of the fleeing from the American forces. Asking for the planes back because America won't support well, Maliki. Uh, now actually, to some him. of the Zukovs that uh, Zukov 25s that the Iranians have flown in were probably uh, some of uh, Saddam Zukov 25s. Right. But, so but here's, here's, the, here's the thing. Look, here, here, what let me, let me doing so they've here, got here, all here. this. They've got the the Muslims fighting the Muslims. So you would think they yeah, but that, 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 that. Break, they, it's breaking they down. So here's my. Tim, Tim, here's and the my last point. My thing point. they would want to do would be to have another war, another yeah, yeah, horrific yeah, war, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Tim, 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 here's my iron on Gaza. Yeah, here's my point, though. The point is, if you stir up enough, you're actually going to have parties that were actually warring each other turn and go on you. And I think you're going to start seeing this happen. Israel's going to get be toast here shortly. Well, yeah, and so is Saudi yeah. Arabia. But, Saudi but, Arabia and Qatar that keep on supplying. Why would they supplying. do that? And I, uh, what I'm saying is, and I agree with you, that will happen. But what I'm saying is, why would they do that? And I think Netanyahu is so far off the deep He's end crazy, and the people crazy. around him is he wants it to happen. Right, exactly. And so here's what they, they want to do. They want to drive the price of oil through the ceiling. They want to cause a level of destruction because they think they got Iron Dome, they got the Gene Pine radar system, etc. All to that Iron Israel. Dome can't hit. Italy. And by the way, most people don't know this. Israeli citizens know this. So if you're listening in Israel, you need to know this. That Iron Dome and those Green Pine Raider systems and Patriot 2 are only to protect military targets, not civilians in uh, Tel Aviv or any of the other settlements or any other little towns around and Israel. Israel is a small, compact target.
target, and they right. have an mm-hmm. enormous number of rockets and missiles. Right, and j- just the military, what we call the throw weight of these smaller, medium-sized rockets that can carry three to 500 pounds of high explosives, fuel air bombs, biological weapons, and radiological bombs, just like dirty bombs, Cobalt-60, they're toast. And in fact, if they blow them up, a lot of them will just disperse the gases or the biological weapons over the target site. So, in fact, if they even are successful at hitting them, it may actually make the problem there, worse. There is also a version of a radiological bomb where you use a glue matrix around the side of the bomb. So the radioactive particles have glue on them, a very difficult to remove yeah. glue, and you can't uh, uh, clean up a contaminated yeah. site by hosing yeah. it down with fire hoses. Oh, you can decontaminate, but it requires them stripping your skin off your body. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Which that is would a, be before it's a one-way after ticket. you assume room temperature. Exactly. Now, so the, the point is, this is an insane policy. Uh, we got to remember now, it goes back to writings over 100 years ago, that they wanted to sacrifice of at least 6 million Jews. And they didn't that's achieve it, by many, the way, in the Second World War. how many Jews live in Israel right now. Right. And the, fact, the fact is, though, they didn't achieve it, even in the Second World War, the real numbers were probably between two and a half and three and a half million. And most of them died of disease. They didn't die in ovens being baked to death or being turned because the amount of energy required to turn them to dust was, this is another lie. The fact is a lot of the Germans, including after the war, died of starvation, including the troops. And especially in these work camps, Arbeit Mach Frei, work supply basically makes you free. So that the workers in these areas, they wanted enough well, food. Well, we so the bombed the continue. railroads that were transporting food around, and and right. then they they had some Russian prisoners that had cholera or uh, cholera, and uh, it spread like wildfire, which uh, right. is what which that killed most of the people. Is. So, yeah. and they're in highly compact areas, which are we're about a perfect out of place time, for, But let, let me move on to the third uh, delightful right. place, right? Uh, the Ukraine. Now, yesterday we had the story, and and I did a breaking news, trying to be positive about it that. Uh, Germany, France, Russia, and Ukraine, their foreign ministers met, and they were talking about, you know, a, a second ceasefire, as if the first ceasefire was worth it. Right. And, and uh, they're going to meet again by the 5th and so forth. Okay. So today, the Ukraine junta's new defense minister stands up in front of parliament, basically Moon Putkin uh, in broad daylight. But anyway, he stands up in front of parliament, and he vows to militarily retake the Crimea from Russia. Wow. I mean, this is like saying... This is like, uh, yeah, let's, let's like, not just throw gas on a fire. Let's just get out there with a 500-gallon uh, tanker and just let it rip, you know. Just how insane uh, can you be? Uh, so uh, it, it's... Uh, uh, okay, let, let, <laughs> and, of course, Tim, the Tim, Ukrainian Tim, civilians Tim. are being bombed by the Juntas Air Force, shelled by the uh, Juntas Army. And if you listen to what Putin's saying, and, and you really should listen to this, he's, he's being very calm he's saying i am very concerned i heard that in 10 to 11 death. days putin's going to move by mid-july so 10 to 11 days is what yeah, my there's, time there's, for- uh, i linked a story that said they, the uh, russian army wouldn't be ready till uh, mid-july, Mid- mid-july maybe yeah, later but- could be but you know what yeah they uh, never know you never know oh, but listen, I, they, I, I think they can be in kiev in, in no time uh, 72 they hours they can take it all over yeah and we can't do a thing about it. And by the way, when this happens... that would tie Russian forces down, which is what they want to do for this Middle East thing. They don't need to tie it down. They can clean up that mess in three days. Well, they don't need to tie down. <laughs> Welcome back. And uh, Tim is here, and uh, Chris Harris is joining us. Chris, uh, just to summarize some of the facts that you have. Number one, in Fukushima, the low-lying uh, fruit from Cooling Pool 4 has been removed. They have stopped now for three months uh, the removal of any of the really difficult stuff because they know it's likely to precipitate a uh, pyrophoric fire, which is literally cause a uh, fire of these radioisotopes, or the damage to the integrity of the cooling pool seal, which will cause the water to drain out and cause a fire. Uh, we have also a situation here in America where we're not getting any new data on the seismic data uh, that were started by the previous director of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And there's a big earthquake that happened in New Mexico border. I don't know how far it is from the the, the, the WIP plant, the, uh, the Waste uh, Isolation Pilot Project, which is taking our old nuclear weapons and destroying them. But these green, kitty litter bombs are down there. God knows if any of them went off. Uh, what's happening in terms of all these areas, and where is it all this going? Because 
I think that uh, the, the Japanese system, they just finished their fuel tanks. They get those all welded up and uh, ready to go, the big tanks. Uh, they stopped their removal of fuel rods from cooling pool number four. But, you know, they're also discovering more radioactivity off of the coast on the seafloor bed. We know that their steam jets created by the cladding on the fuel rod assembly bundles is going to generate tritium and, uh, and, and superheated uh, water, steam, that's going to literally create venting channels all the way out to the seafloor and then back through the rocks many miles. So even uh, subway tunnels north of Tokyo are actually showing up high radioactivity when people take out the radiation monitors. So we welcome people out there to send us data. If you're actually going in the steam in the tube train tunnels in north north Tokyo, you'll see your radiation detector go crazy because there's rock channels carrying all the way from Fukushima for many miles. So uh, what's the latest? What's happening, uh, Chris? Well, I guess uh, griping isn't the word, but we've been griping about those bolted together tanks that they're using for radioactive wastewater for quite a long time now. And uh, apparently other people have been also tired of the leakages. So they've ordered and are getting now delivery and beginning installation of welded tanks, which are the proper kind of tank to use for a radioactive material to store it and so they're going to be phasing out i don't know maybe maybe you can get one of those bolted together tanks cheap i guess right now but um you know, maybe they'll sell them off but the they're getting delivery of the new welded together tanks which is the proper way to store radioactive now, it, now provided they install them correctly because even the ones that they had before were installed on a sloped surface instead of on a level surface, which throws off the level gauges, which uh, came in groups of five, so they couldn't tell when one tank was ready to overflow, the other tank looked like it was only, you know, you know, 90% full, and so they would subsequently try to fill the low tank, and, and uh, they're all connected together in groups of five, and then they'd wonder why they were overflowing one of them, because they, they constructed them on, uh, on level ground. So if provided they, they install these correctly, then, then that would be a good step towards containing some of it. That doesn't stop the source of the generation of the waste. Uh, and that's a different story. This is a you know, huge mess. And so, but they are, they, they are actually going to phase out the, uh, the leaky, uh, unsuitable tanks that they already have installed. So it's a major project. They're being barged in, and I sent you a link, courtesy simplyinfo.org. Right. I get Those, some very good yeah. good news for, that it's just a straight fact, you know, uh, right. news. And it's, uh, so, let me fire a couple of questions at you, uh, Christy. Yeah. First one is, is there more subsidence? They're taking measurements with inclinometers and looking at subsidence. Is that it getting worse at the site? Uh, have they started work on this uh, ice wall, which is likely to cause massive turning it into what I call a uh, granola porridge mess, which will make the building start to fall over and lose containment uh, in the common cooling pool, cooling pool four, which means it's immediately going to create a crisis. Uh, why did they stop for three months? I can only speculate that they have found signs of structural problems, uh, the danger of removing the additional very bent fuel rod assembly bundles, the danger of a leak from the seal at the bottom of the cooling pool, uh, some structural reason why they're freaked out by doing this. There's something very amiss, and I'm very suspicious of subsidence has gotten worse, that they've discovered something new that makes the idea of trying to remove these very touchy. Well, you know, it depends on who you, at, who you go to for your source of information for the answers to those questions that you had answered, but you're, you know, there are some reports of some subsidence, but if you ask TEPCO, there is minimum. Yeah, not, not yeah there zero, should be a kind of minimum. serial report that says we're leading yeah. at number and number of degrees on a certain, you know, northwest pillar of the building or a cooling pool wall. Uh, we have so many centimeters of, of subsidence occurring in a certain area of the building. Uh, you know, the thixotropic score of the soil is such and such. I mean, that's the score for turning into a gel because it's getting wet. You can go down and dig very very shallow and you actually get into mush on the site there. So, um, And, of course, they, they did, they're did they very sloppy. They even had rats chewing through wires of one of the generators they were using to run something uh, on the plant last, uh, you know, earlier this year. 
uh, you know, I call it the, the, the radioactive rat problem, which uh, you can be like a sci-fi thriller. Are you talking um, about our politicians in Washington? No, we're talking about Fukushima. Yeah, they're, they're, Sorry. they're a different kind of rat. They're, they're non-radioactive rats. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, Tim. Uh, next one, talking about the, here in America, the land of the free and the home, home of the quivering and, and fearful. Uh, the uh, Just a little sarcasm there. Uh, we have the whip reactor, which is funny. They're whipping us into shape, okay? The waste isolation pilot project. They're whipping us with radioisotopes. What, where is this earthquake and how close it was it to the plant? Did it, did it, was it close enough to actually be a nuclear explosion underground or is it a real earthquake? Because this is very anomalous. Well, I read some of the reports. That I, I think I even sent you a copy for last week and it showed how they do store some higher level fissionable material in the same areas as where where the uh, initial explosion happened was that Valentine's Day this year, right? And back in February, and so uh, yeah, and it showed how they how they put a neutron absorber in the same drums, and it's, it's pretty elaborate. To be honest with you, I look at it, you know, this is a pretty elaborate setup. But once you go ahead and change your material, like a desiccant that had to be like a bentonite clay, i.e., kitty litter into something else that they call kitty litter, which is an organic material. You never put an organic material in a, in a radioactive field, but you want to be green, so there's some edict. We're oh, going yeah. to now be That's green. That's a different kind of green. Yeah. That's a different, well, definitely but, different but, kind of green. Can I interrupt and ask? I mean, isn't that insane for crying out loud if they know they're, you, you don't use organic material, but they did it anyway? Oh yeah. Well, it means that there's a big there's a big flaw in their design process and their procurement process. This is something we we uh, I'm not saying we conquered it in the, in the industry because we I know that uh, we did we did we didn't get it. We're not 100 percent proof, but we're also very vigilant for such uh, material changes. And right. It's very mm. difficult to get so, a material change without a huge. Uh, battery of questions and answers that you right. Have so these people were so somehow were, this got through. It just got through because we have an wow. aggressive uh, Department of Energy or uninformed idiots, and they forced this green policy on, and somehow the nuclear technicians bowed to it, not knowing that it was going to generate hydrogen and create an explosion. And then, of course, we have a situation where the JASCO, which is the last director of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission before he was removed from his position, I guess would be the, the, the nice way to say it, uh, suggested that we do seismic testing to make sure our reactors wouldn't break down or lose containment. And probably half the reactors in America are close to a seismic zone. Uh, any progress in that area? Or are they still kind of studying the fact that they need another study? Well, for the seismic issues, they're going to be studying this for quite a long time. In fact, the, plant, the, the plants that are physically west of the Mississippi haven't all submitted their reports yet. So Whoa. They, are, so we, have, are they, we have to look at those things. So uh, actually, we're going to see if the submissions are going to be pre-apocalypse or post-apocalyptic. How's that? <laughs> Little Fourth of July humor here. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Yeah, there you go. Before the fireworks, the Fourth of July, the biggest fireworks on earth. Welcome back, and uh, it's the last segment before the end of the uh, of the year, before the Fourth of July celebrations. And I want to say a positive note. I want to say a little prayer. I want to pray for America. We come together here at Neutral Medical and Clay and Iron Show with all our great uh, contributors like Tim Alexander, uh, Chris Harris, uh, Doctor Mike Kaufman, all the experts that come on the program, uh, Doctor Bob Teal, etc. Uh, you know John, John Moore on Mondays, yourself, Tim, Harley Schlanger, all these experts. And we want to come and pray for America. We firstly pray that, number one, the, the, the way you pray to God, if you want to really get right with God, is you give God your own sins and sicknesses, your own kind of uh, cursings against others, and then you start giving God the good things, the reasons that make you glorious and happy, the things that make you positive. And when you start giving those to God, he starts taking them away. 
he takes away the, the, the bad things and he amplifies the glad things. And what we need to do is do that. That's going to open up the heavenlies. So this says, let, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, it says let, that things on earth be like those in heaven. In other words, we have the right here on earth if we actually pray to God and let him come into our lives personally. Then we're able to actually act as agents to literally truly pray for America that people will wake up. The vast majority of people don't understand the spiritual element of what's going on in our politics, our medical system, our religious systems. They don't understand the environmental degradation and the danger of war and economic devastation. It's right on our doorsteps. We're on a thousand foot cliff and we're racing like lemons over it. And I really want to say that the next financial system won't be just the collapse of the dollar. It'll be a system called authentication. In other words, we're moving quickly and rapidly toward a system where biological identification, literally walking to the grocery store in your birthday suit, if it wasn't illegal, uh, could allow you to use biometrics to buy your groceries and push your shopping cart to your car and then drive home bare, buff, naked without ever showing an ID card or a credit card because your retinal scan, your biometrics, or even if drop of blood with using the Affymetrics uh, Oak Ridge National Lab Building 10 DNA biochip if you need to get into a secure facility, obviously not to get groceries. But if you're working for Lockheed Martin, Lucent Technologies, Storage Tech or one of these other companies uh, that I uh, took care of employees or once contracted to work at U.S. Space Command, that we're dealing with a situation where we're moving toward the mark of the beast. Now, everything in the Bible is moving forward. We're going to bring back on the program Mark Biltz. And over the last week or so, I've been reading his book, and I want people to realize no matter what bad things happen, our God's in control. And the people out there who don't know God, we want them to teach them that now's the time to start getting familiar with God. And if you don't believe the Bible, what you simply do is test God. God wants you to test by simply bringing the bad things that happen in your life to God and say, you know, God, I got a lot of unforgiveness. I got a lot of things where people did bad stuff to me. I got a lot of this and that. Things that you think you've forgiven are deep in the crevices and the guts of your of your soul. And as you give these to God, God just takes them away and he just buries them. They're just gone. He vaporizes them. And and you all of a sudden you realize, like, it's not yours anymore. And then you realize that God starts to inspire you what to do with your physical body, with your finances, to help your neighbor, to help your nation. He starts giving you compassion for people in other parts of the world where there's a little Palestinian boy that was killed recently as a revenge crime against these three little boys that were killed also in Israel. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't care what parties were involved so much when we're dealing with all this murder. I think it's just stop. Human beings shouldn't do this stuff. We shouldn't be dropping phosphorus bombs on little girls in Palestine, stripping their flesh from their bones. We shouldn't be conspiring with bankers to allow proliferation of nuclear biological weapons and think because people are a different religious or skin color or language that we need to kill them. We need to realize that the earth is dying. We have a oceans dying, the Pacific Ocean's dying from radionuclides and the increased level of ozone destruction. And we have experts like every week that come on and, you know, a great amount of work, uh, Chris Harris, Tim Alexander daily labors over the news and I think it's taking its toll on your physical and emotional health, Tim, because that's why we need to help you with some nutraceuticals, because I think we're in a situation where our nation is under grave judgment right now. And we're led by a fool. We're led by a Hananiah leader. In the words of Hillary Clinton, who literally is the most evil person I've ever met, she even said, and she's intelligent but malevolently black, liquid evil, that Obama is an incompetent flake. Now, that's from the words of what I call literally the if you want to call it the daughter of Satan himself, Lilith, if you want to call it, or his former consort, uh, telling you the truth that Obama is a flake and that he doesn't have his hand on the tiller to steer the nation, the state of the nation. And it's not just him. It's all the progressive communists in the Democratic Party. It's all the flakes in the Republican Party that want to take us to war. It's all the people that say Israel can do anything and can't do anything wrong. I think we just need to annex Israel so the Joint Chiefs of Staff can control their resources and stop them from starting a big nuclear war. But it's also the Muslim nations, what are we doing giving Muslim nations mad pads and stinger missiles when they swear to kill us? What are we doing when we don't you know, call out the moderate Muslims to say, why aren't you speaking against the extreme Muslims because they're radicalizing your religion and turning it into a whoredom, literally making it a monstrosity that no one on earth can tolerate? I mean, here in America, if this could really gets out of hand, we're going to see not only illegal immigrants coming in that have got many diseases, but we're going to see a lot of people that are Muslim, some of them very nice people, they're going to end up in these civil detention camps like the Japanese in World War II. And if a war breaks out in the Middle East, 
uh, things are going to heads are going to roll. And I think if people think it's just going to be funny, how about if your son ends up getting in a draft and ends up maybe they get a body bag back or body parts, but that may be the best you'll have of the memory of your son or daughter serving in another stupid war. America is war weary. And as we look at Independence Day, the first thing we need to be independent of is international bankers. We need to be independent of ignorance and gutlessness. Independent of not willing to seek the truth is that God said, because you you decide to believe not a, the truth, I will show, send you a strong delusion. We're deluded. And we put these programs on every day to undelude you because we are servants of the Most High God. We are feeding God's sheep the truth for physical restoration of your health, for protection of your finances and your spiritual life and restoration of your relationship with the Creator God, for the restoration of America as a lead nation on the earth and for other nations to turn back to God, even if they're godless. And there's a lot of godless nations, socialist nations that are really so far down the road. And not only common sense is bringing them back, like Australia is now going to strike down their environmental laws, their green laws that are killing their economy, closing their their coal mines, etc. So I'd like you to give some closing statements, Tim and uh, Chris. This is well, nuts. I, you, you just said, uh, you, you, not a rant, but a very long statement, and I think you said it extremely well, by the way. Well, well, I think we need to start repenting. And, you know, let's make it not just Independence Day. How about we call it Repentance Day? The day when America gets down in sackcloth and ashes and thanks God that he's reserved America through all the whoredoms that we've done, all the murders we've done, and still says you can still become the daughter of Zion. Not a Zionist like the maniacs in Israel, but bring Zion, which means we become the living stones of the new Jerusalem. We bring down heaven to earth because we treat all people of all nations, colors, and skins like the prophecy of Joseph, which means the outer court of the temple is supposed to be for all the nations to bring peace to the planet. Not to bring war and destruction and death of the planet Earth, so it's a dead cinder around a yellow dwarf star. Your comments, Chris? Yeah, well, Dr. Bill, yeah, in both that respect, God, I know, has uh, made us to be free, free to worship God, you know, and, and yeah, to exactly. ask for guidance. And if, really, that's really what freedom is. Freedom to have no other masters before God. Exactly. Uh, in other words, free but, to realize the only freedom comes when we become bond servants of the Most High, when we become sons and daughters of God, when we actually start operating in His authority and picking up our scepter. Don't act like a victim. Don't think, oh my gosh, we got a bad leader. The bad leader is this pimple on the abscess of the body politic of America. Obama is just a punching bag, a, a, an incompetent, narcissistic dissociative identity we need to pray for the man as we pray for him god will deal with him as we pray for george soros and all the others god will take them out and bring them home to kind of make a they'll either get a chance for grace or they'll receive judgment but as we pray for these people that have great, great sins on them god not only forgives us but he applies the supernatural power of closure he's going to bring closure to things if we pray for our enemies as jesus says it heaps great heaps of fire on their heads as we pray for them Pray for America so it's not Independence Day, it's independence from evil, from lies, from gutlessness, and from believing that somehow without God we can rule a nation, godly nation, and we can have true independence. So true independence is independence from the devil and all his wiles and anything other than God. The definition of the good is to hear and do God's will, and that's the true Independence Day. So let's call it Independence and Repentance Day from now on. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Pray for the peace of not only of Jerusalem, but America. Or I call it Ephraim, America, and Judah, the two houses. Pray for the peace of the world that's heading toward a cauldron of disasters.